Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Omide and I'm going to discuss and this is basically um, um, histological organization of the whole low gastrointestinal tract, not the... So the histology of the gastrointestinal um, tract, you have a lumen, okay, and the whole low GI, that's where the food is, then the inner layer is the mucosa followed by submucosa then the muscularis externa, which is made up of smooth muscle cell. And most of the time you have inner circular layer and outer longitudinal layer of the smooth muscles. Then lastly, serosa. So most of the hollow GI, you have those um, four layers, the mucosa, the submucosa, muscularis externa, and serosa. So this that's the general structure of the GI. So how do you describe the mucosa? You should be able to describe the mucosa in detail. So mucosa of the GI contains epithelium and hollow GI, most of it is simple columnar, but a few places like the esophagus and the anal canal, you find stratified squamous. The oral cavity, uh, oral cavity, oropharynx, esophagus, and anal canal, you find um, stratified squamous, but the other hollow GI is simple columnar. Then there may be presence of microvilli, like in the small intestines and the gallbladder. Then the lamina propria is under the epithelium. It contains loose connective tissue, glands, um, lymphatic tissue. So those are the contents of lamina propria. So loose connective tissue means haphazardly arranged collagen and elastic fibers, and they're not abundant. Then you have uh, some uh, mucosal glands, lymphatic tissue, T cells, B cells, okay, lymphoid. And this lamina propria in the small intestine, they may protrude together with the overlying epithelium into the lumen of the bowels, the small intestine, to form villi. So villi has, is, villi is the protrusion of lamina propria and the overlying epithelium into the lumen of the small bowel. The third part of the mucosa is the muscularis mucosa, muscularis, so the smooth muscle beneath the mucosa. And it has two layers, the inner circular and outer longitudinal layers of smooth muscle cells. So that's a description of the mucosa of the hollow GI. Then we go to the submucosa. Submucosa has neurovascular structures, lymphatic vessels, and submucosal glands in some areas, like the duodenum, you have the Brunner's glands, which are submucosal. This submucosa, together with the mucosa, the whole mucosa, remember mucosa has epithelium, lamina propria, and muscularis mucosa. So together with the submucosa below it, they can protrude into the tracts of the lumen, protrude into the lumen to form plicae. Plicae are seen mainly in the jejunum and ilium. So plicae are protrusion of mucosa and submucosa. But the protrusion of just the epithelium and lamina uh, propria forms the villi in the small intestines. Then the muscularis externa has um, mainly smooth muscle cells arranged in inner layer and inner circular and outer longitudinal. But in the upper part of the upper third of the esophagus, there's the presence of skeletal muscle. Okay? Most of the GI is smooth muscle. Most of the hollow GI is inner circular and outer longitudinal. But in the stomach, we have three layers. Remember, the stomach has to churn um, the uh, food. So you have three layers, circular, longitudinal, and oblique. Then we have the adventitia, okay, which is the last layer that covers the hollow GI. This is made up of serous membrane, which has simple um, squamous epithelium. Remember, it's the visceral peritoneum. Okay, so it's a serous or fibrous membrane. So this is just basically how the hollow GI is organized is a mucosa that has epithelium lamina propria and muscularis mucosa there. Then there is a submucosa, neurovascular structures and connective tissue, before you get to muscularis externa with inner circular and outer longitudinal, before you get to the... So we start with esophagus. So esophagus has a mucosa, which is non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. Stratified squamous parakeratinized epithelium okay, in the mucosa. Then lamina propria, we have already described the features of lamina propria in, uh, below lamina propria you find muscularis mucosa. So then the submucosa has esophageal mucus glands. So we have esophageal mucus glands 
and the mucosa and submucosa of the esophagus will protrude to the lumen and form longitudinal plaque. Mucosa and submucosa in the esophagus protrude to the lumen and form longitudinal plica. And as the food keeps passing in the esophagus, this plica appear and disappear. So stratified squamous parakeratinized epithelium there in the mucosa, followed by lamina propria before you get to the muscularis mucosa. Stratified squamous parakeratinized epithelium, lamina propria, and muscularis mucosa is this thinner dark um, um, area. So all this is mucosa, muscularis mucosa is here, okay, then this mucosa begins here, and muscularis externa. So the muscularis externa in the upper third of this esophagus is skeletal, the middle third is mixed skeletal and smooth, and the lower third is only smooth muscle. These muscles are arranged in inner circular and outer longitudinal bundles. Then the adventitia of the esophagus has the fibrous membrane or the serous membrane. We go to the food there from the stomach, if from the esophagus moves to the stomach. So remember the normal discussion. We start with the mucosa. Mucosa of the stomach with the submucosa, there's the presence of invagination of mucosa and submucosa to form longitudinal plica. Okay? Now, the mucosa of the stomach has openings called gastric pits. Okay, openings called gastric pits and um, few lymphatic tissue. So how do you describe mucosa of the stomach? We have epithelial cells. The epithelium of stomach is simple columnar epithelium, but we also have mucus cells on this epithelium. And these epithelial cells of the stomach have very tight junction between them, and they produce mucus. This mucus um, are within granules, Okay, in the upper part of the cytoplasm. So the granules are located in the upper part of cytoplasms, and these granules contain mucus. So these cells have tight junction between them. So this mucus that is produced is usually insoluble and has high bicarbonate level. Remember, the stomach is acidic, so mucus cells help to produce bicarbonate to protect the mucosa from the acidity. So the mucus, there's a mucus bicarbonate barrier formed by mucus and tight junction. Mucus bicarbonate barrier formed by mucus and tight junction, and this protects the mucosa of the stomach from being eroded by the acid, as well as the enzymes. We have enzymes, renin and pepsin in the stomach. So you protect with this mucus bicarbonate barrier. So after the epithelium, the next layer of the mucosa is the lamina propria, made up of loose connective tissue, collagen, elastic fibers, fibroblasts, there's also presence of some smooth muscle fibers, and we have the mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue in the stomachs, so that's the gut, as well as gastric gland in appropriate. Okay, these gastric glands are single or branched glands, and the glands have three parts. There's a neck, a base, and usually these uh, glands open on the surface of the epithelium as gastric pits. So the gastric glands have a neck and base. They open on the surface of epithelium at gastric pits, and they contain five types of cells. So this is the epithelium simple um, columna. This is the lamina propria. So within the lamina propria, we have gastric glands, which are single or branched glands. And you have a neck and the base. And these gastric glands open on the surface as gastric pits. So this is gastric gland proper. So this is your mucosa, epithelium, and lamina propria. Okay, so epithelium there and lamina propria, then muscularis mucosa. So they form the mucosa, and then below is the submucosa. So you have different cells of the gastric um, glands. You have the surface lining cells, simple columna. You have parietal or cells and um, endocrine, enteroendocrine cells of amine protein uptake and decarboxylation. So this is the gastric gland opening on the surface as gastric pits. So this is gastric pits on the upper surface with, lined by surface mucus cells, simple columnar cells producing mucus. The neck has parietal cells, okay, mucus cells there, and 
uh, put cells or the endocrine cells. You still have endocrine cells, parietal cells, the chief cells, and endocrine cells at the base. So you have the gastric bit, neck, and base, and different types of cells. So you need to know all the cells of the stomach and their functions. So when you see a slide like this, you know this is stomach, simple called lamina epithelium. Epithelium invaginates into lamina propria as gastric glands that open towards the surface as gastric pits. So these, these are gastric glands with different types of cells in the gastric gland. So the first cell is a chief zym or the zymogenic cell. Okay, this is a protein synthesizing cell. So it will have features of protein synthesis. Go back to the introductory histology lectures. So um, it will have a basophilic uh, base of the cytoplasm, a burden trough endoplasmic reticulum, a burden ribosome, and the apices of the cytoplasm is acidophilic because you have granules containing what has been the protein that has been synthesized. These are lipases and inactive pepsinogen. So these are the features of a protein synthesizing cell. Basophilic base, acidophilic apical cytoplasm with granules, abundant trough endoplasmic and ribosomes. So they secrete lipase and pepsinogens, these chief cells. Then we have parietal cells, which are also called oxytic cells. So these parietal cells are mainly at the upper part of the gland. They have one or two nuclei, and they have a strong acidophilic cytoplasm, strong acidophilic cytoplasm and abundant mitochondria. Okay, so they have a cell membrane that invaginates, and their surrounding smooth endoplasmic reticulum have tubulovesicle system. Okay, and these parietal cells, they contain carbonic anhydrase which is necessary to produce hydrogen. So they have carbonic anhydrase that helps to produce hydrogen. Parietal cells secrete hydrochloric acid. So they secrete acid, that's why they have strong acidophilic cytoplasm and they have microvilli in their canaliculi. Then they, this hydrochloric acid that has been produced, it helps to convert the inactive pepsinogen to active pepsin. Apart from secreting hydrochloric acid, parietal cells also secrete intrinsic factor. Intrinsic factor helps in the absorption of vitamin B12 in the terminal ileum. So parietal cells or auxitic cells produce HCl, okay, due to the presence of carbonic anhydrase, they produce HCl that helps to convert inactive pepsinogen to pepsin. They also produce intrinsic factor to help terminal ileum absorb vitamin B12. So these are the canaliculi of the parietal cell that contain microvilli and they have acidophilic granules there. Then we have mucus cells. These are on the surface mainly. Okay, They stain positive with periodic acid shift. They're located at the neck of the glands. They produce mucus to protect the lining of the stomach from acid. We have endocrine cells. These are part of the um, uh, apud. So they help to produce hormones that regulate the function of the GIT. Then um, the endocrine cells are different types, open type, closed type. So um, open type are around the lumen and closed types are separated with the lumens of the gland. The other cell we have is a stem cell, okay, to help regenerate the mucosa of the, G, of the, of the stomach. The stem cells are basal cells. After um, the lamina propria, we get to the muscularis mucosa, which has inner circular and outer longitudinal smooth muscle layers. From the mucosa of the stomach, you go to the submucosa with loose connective tissue, collagen, elastic fibers, fibroblasts, and neurovascular structures. Then you get to the muscularis. The stomach has three layers of smooth muscle cells, inner oblique layer, middle circular layer, then lastly, the outer longitudinal layer. And in between these smooth muscles of the stomach, you have nerves, okay, which are the um, intramural ganglia. So you have nerve plexus, which you call intramural ganglia. This shows you the hour back plexus of nerve. Then after the muscularis, you have the adventitia made up of serous membrane. So mucosa, epithelium thrown into uh, folds or rather invaginating as gastric glands uh, that open on the surface as gastric pits. Gastric glands have parietal cells, chief cells, stem cells, endocrine cells, mucus cells, and you know the functions. Then from lamina propria with the gastric glands, you get to muscularis mucosa, then to the submucosa, muscularis with three layers of muscle, then adventitia.
Okay, so that is the histology of the stomach and you need to describe each layer in detail. So next we'll discuss the small intestine. Thank you.